Hey, hope you guys are doing well. Edgar from Solo Marketer here, and in this video, I want to quickly show you how to use the new calendar feature on System.io, and essentially, yeah, how to use it, how to set it up, also some of the glitches and downsides of it. I'm going to kind of quickly try to go through everything, uh, but again, yeah, keep in mind if there's any glitches or whatever. By the time you see this video, those might not be the case anymore. It's just I'm I'm recording this video as of I don't know it's been like four or five days since it's been released. But yeah, if you're watching it right now as it's been like just launched, just so you're aware of what the issues are. But yeah, as you log in, you can see there's a calendar feature, and uh, here up top you have three options. You have events where we'll, we're going to set up the actual calendar. Uh, we have bookings where you're going to be able to see once people book off, uh, book a certain date and time. Obviously, you're going to get an email, but also you're going to be able to see in your system as like kind of like an overview like let's say as you would see on calendly right and uh yeah so that's the bookings list and availability this is essentially global availability if you have like a i don't know five calendars right you can just set up availability and uh, kind of like a so it applies to all the calendars combined right we'll see there's a toggle switch when we're going to create the calendar or we can just apply this global availability right or from calendar to calendar if you have want to have different availabilities then you don't use this thing really so yeah for now let's just assume we have one calendar so it doesn't matter but we, we're just going to keep this as is but just so you know you can set one specific availability for all your calendars uh, so yeah let's go to events let's click on create new event so at the beginning it's pretty straightforward right you can do something like 101 with edgar's how long you want it to be uh, so it's going to be yeah from 5 to 120 minutes or you can do custom let's say you want to do 50 minutes per call right host name you guessed it edgar's obviously host photo you can upload yours and now you can see location so uh, online meeting that's obviously going to be a, a zoom call google meet whatever right skype uh, then there's the phone call if you click on it you can just type in your phone number or personal which means just basically you type in your address, right? If it's like like an in-office uh, meeting, for example. Uh, so yeah, that's the third option. But the most popular, 90, 95% at least, the online meeting. So you can see you have two options. You have Zoom, which uh, after we set up this calendar, we'll go integrate Zoom. Uh, and I'll show you how to do a direct integration and how to come back and connect it to your calendar. But in this case, we're going to do an external link. Make sure yes, that it's in this format, right? So let's say it's going to be slash whatever, right? Let's say we're going to do a Google Meet link. So it needs to be HTTPS and then the actual link, right? Don't skip on HTTPS. It's not going to let you. So make sure to use it. Uh, so let's click on save. So whatever it is, might be a Google Meet link, might be a, I don't know, Skype link, whatever kind of other video call links there might be. And... Uh, I'm just going to type this in just so you can see where it shows up in real life. Yeah, description. And here you can see availability. So here you have to set it up as opposed to like a rolling time. So that's kind of a downside as opposed to saying, hey, it always applies for the next 14 days, right? Uh, in this case, you have to set a specific time period. So you kind of manually have to come back. Let's say once a week, every Monday, you come back and you move that month, one month period to like a little bit further away, right? A little bit further ahead. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of slightly inconvenient, but once you get used to it, it's fine. And yeah, the available hours, that's what I mentioned before. Remember the up top, the third option, global settings. So this is if you have global settings, uh, global availability set up, uh, you can just uh, kind of switch this toggle on for, for each calendar that you make, right? All five calendars would have this on and it you wouldn't need to do all this stuff five times. And yeah, as for the time availability, it's pretty straightforward. Um, as per usual with these things, it will be here you set like the, let's say we want to do every Monday from, I don't know, let's just set something 7.30 to 10, 10 a.m. And every Wednesday we want to do from 10.15 to 3.45, some weird times. And you can do multiple slots, right? So here you can do, let's say we go on early lunch, and then we can do something like two to five or let's do that. That's an awful schedule, but you know, let's, let's do it for example's sake. So that's yeah. Every Monday and Wednesday, right? We do 50, 50 minute calls and here you can set date specific availability as it shows here, the set availability for specific dates. This lets you override your regular hours for unique events. So as you can see here, Christmas, New Year's falls into this one month period. So what are we going to do? We're going to set Christmas. We're going to set New Year's. 
But keep in mind that at the time of recording this, it's kind of glitchy because I'm going to be selecting 24th, December 24th, right? I selected it, but it shows 23rd. If I select 25th, it's going to show 24th. So by the time you get to this point, uh, just make sure that, you know, you select one, but you go test the calendar. You see whether that availability is actually as you set it up, basically. In this case, you just set up your hours for those specific days. Or if you don't want to be available at all, you can either switch it off here or you can just set like unreasonably small hours here, something like this. Right. So nobody will be able to book you on those dates. Right. Because it's physically impossible to fit within a uh, within a 15 minute window when you have 50 minute calls. So you can do that. And obviously you can remove and you can do multiple. So that's kind of, yeah, pretty straightforward, but just block off those specific days. These are one off kind of blocks or different availabilities. Let's say on the 25th, right? I think that's a Wednesday. If I remember correctly, you can do instead of 10, 15 to 345, you can do like an 11 to 12 or whatever other smaller window or a different window. So you can do all that here, but just remember it's still kind of glitchy as see, it always jumps back one date. So. I'll be extra careful with this part. Hopefully by the time you get to this, it's not going to be an issue anymore, but just, yeah, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, start time increments. So this one is essentially, yeah. How do you want it to show up on your calendar, right? If you do 30 minutes, so it's going to show up as your availability or the time slots they can pick are going to be three, three thirty, four, four thirty. If you pick 60, for example, right? One hour increments. So it's going to be 3 PM, 4 PM, 5 PM. So just select your increments, whatever you're comfortable with. If they're too small, there's going to be like 50,000 options. So usually it's either 30 or 60. So that's, yeah, that's kind of, I would just pick if you have long days available, I would pick bigger time slot. I like those increments where if, if you're available only for like three hours per day, I would pick smaller increments, but that's kind of like, Hey, just to give you some guidance, but pick whatever seems more convenient to you. Uh, yeah, let's do 60 daily limit. Let's say we don't want to do more than, uh, than three. Oh, actually let's set, uh, yeah, let's set it 60. Uh, yeah, no more than three calls. A buffer time. This is essentially you block off when somebody blocks, when somebody books a call with you, you can set it up in a way where um, they can only book it if there's also 15 minutes before that, let's say we select buffer time 15 minutes before, there's also a free space in the calendar for 15 minutes before the call they want to book. If there's something leading up to that moment and there's no 15 minute gap for the buffer, they're not going to be able to book that call. Uh, so this is essentially for moments where, not for moments, for, but for cases where maybe you need to prepare for the call, right? That would be a pre buffer. Or if you, uh, I don't know, maybe you want to do an after buffer, uh, as in you did the call and then maybe you did a 50 minute call, right? And then you need 10 minutes to kind of just have, I don't know, for whatever reason, after the call, you know, just to kind of go over whatever was discussed. But one thing that I would not recommend is having both of them. I would pick one because otherwise it's going to uh, be hard for them to book a call because there's these tail ends that don't overlap. These buffers don't overlap. So this thing essentially with the 15 minutes is going to take up an hour and 15 minutes total, right? 50, 15 and 10 because of the buffers. And it's a lot of just, yeah, it just takes up a lot of space in your calendar and it's not really efficient. But uh, once you have selected these, essentially you have no way of unselecting them, right? You can try to delete it. There's just no way, right? So uh, just don't, if there's not going to be a buffer, don't even start clicking around or you need to save it and then refresh the page or I don't even know. But as of right now, there's no way to unselect or maybe, yeah, there's no way. If we click on the same thing twice, there's no way. There's no way to delete it. There's just, yeah, there's always like it's on. So yeah, don't even touch it if you, if you don't, if you're not sure. And time zone display, uh, automatically detect and show the times in my invitees time zone. This I think is, I don't know, 999 times out of a thousand. This is the way to go. Uh, you don't want to inconvenience people and impose your own time zone for no reason because they're going to be planning things based on their time zone. So why not keep it as is, right? So let's just keep this on, save and preview. I think everything is set properly. This is the calendar. So this is the preview and yeah, once they click on it, it's just like a Calendly, they pick a time and then they put their, put in their name and email and, and they receive a notification email for this. All right. So this is all cool, but, uh, how do I actually use this calendar? Right? So, oh, actually, no, first things first, or rather let's do one more thing before that. Uh, let's do zoom integration. Let's go to settings 
And then let's go to, let's scroll down. It was somewhere here, Zoom integration, right? What this is, it, it's a direct integration, right? So I'm gonna quickly integrate Zoom. Uh, just, it's basically you click connect Zoom, you log into your Zoom account. Uh, there's gonna be a pop-up and you click a couple of yeses and this is it, Zoom is gonna be connected. So it's gonna be pretty straightforward, all the, all the instructions. So I'm gonna quickly do it uh, just so we don't waste time. Okay, yeah, so I logged in, uh, I did a checkbox, I said yes. And that's it. It's just we're here, right? It's active. It's an active integration. And obviously, you can delete this integration. Uh, but yeah, this is my Zoom integration. It took like three clicks. So what we want to do now, we're going to go back, click on Calendar 101, right? The one we created. We click on Online Meeting. Let's click on it. And there's no... Yeah, why is it that? Let's refresh the page. Let's just refresh it. I think it might be the case. Let's click on it again. Yep, it's just in case you saw me integrating it and then it didn't show up, just refresh the page and it should be fine. So over here we have Zoom, right? Let's click on save. So they will receive a Zoom link within their kind of invitation once they book it. Uh, another thing to look out for, which is kind of weird is if you go click on it again, we click on external link, right? Let's do it again. Uh, if we have this link here, right? We picked external and we click on save. And let's say, oh, I want to go back and double check. Let's click on it, and it's back to Zoom. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, and then we have to put it in again. Save, right? Uh, you can also, as far as I remember, yeah, you can pick two options as well. That's kind of while we're here, right? And as we're going to save it, you can see there's going to be two options. They can pick which one, phone or online meeting. So that's also, you can pick all three as well. So that's that. So we have the calendar. Okay, so where's the link to the calendar? What do we do, right? So if there's no link here, how do I actually use it? So what you need to do is you want to go to websites, sales funnels, and you actually have to integrate it in your own kind of like a landing page or just any page basically. And we're just going to, yeah, let's just go in any one of those funnels. Let's just go... Yeah, you can you can click on uh, kind of create new and then, then just a basic like a opt in squeeze squeeze page, whatever you want to call it. Right. I'm just going to use an existing page. Let's just delete this thing or no, let's just delete this. Right. And on the left side with the elements, there's going to be a calendar element. So let's drag it in. Right. Here we go. Let's save it. No, oh, actually, yeah, I completely forgot. Actually, when I click on it, right? Obviously, there's the usual customization options, colors, whatnot, right? You can select this. You can do red if you want. So whatever your brand colors are. Uh, but yeah, you have to actually select an event over here. I don't know why I didn't approve this in the first place. Uh, but yeah, if you have multiple calendars, this is where you click on this element and you select it here just to make sure that the right calendar is connected. Uh, also... Yeah, you can customize everything, spacing, all that stuff. And also the top text over here, same as for the two-step uh, checkout form. But another thing you want to do is you want to go to form. So also you can decide what kind of elements, what kind of things you want to ask for. Let's say I don't need their last name, for example, right? I can just delete this stuff, delete this. Uh, in this case, I need their phone number in case they, they select the phone number. So or actually, yeah, yeah, let's just keep it in just in case. But technically, maybe it's going to, you know what, just in case I'm going to leave it in. OK, so let's not overthink this uh, first name email. But you can add more fields, right? This is the uh, form input element. You can drag it in here, click on it. And basically, you can select zip code, what niche you are in. That's a custom one, tax number, street address, whatever you want it to be, right? You can add more to the form, whatever you need. Uh, but yes, let's go back. In this case, yeah, it's kind of an incomplete page, but just to show you the preview, I'm going to actually fill out the form, right? Let's select a date. This is my face. Let's drag it here. So I'm going to select a date in this form. I'm going to do a online meeting. Next step. Time slot is required. Okay. Next step. Uh, let's quickly fill it in. All right. This is the phone number. Let's submit. And this is the thank you page. So this is obviously the wrong page because it's a template, but essentially it takes them to the next page in the funnel, right? So this is kind of a confirmation page. Let's go check it out in email, what that looks like from the end user's perspective. As you can see here, we booked it, right? An email comes in. It shows all the information. This is the link, right? Because I showed the, uh, I checked the online meeting option. So that's the link that I pasted in. I, I switched away from Zoom integration to like my custom link. 
Uh, there's no password. I don't really know what this is. An event description. This is where I typed in description at the beginning, remember? And this is obviously the, the, the meeting name. And here it shows the time. The big downside as of right now, hopefully by the time you see this, that's going to be not fixed. It's just not, it's a missing feature, let's say. Uh, there's no direct integration with, let's say, a Google Calendar, right? Like you would have on Calendly. So this is a good starting point, but there's still some things missing. A workaround would be, let's say you can set up a uh, an email sequence where let's say when they sign up and they signed up like four days before the actual meeting or two weeks before the actual meeting, you can set up an email sequence where they receive notification emails three days before, two days before, one day before, because people, if they set up calls for two weeks ahead of time, most of them will not show up. They'll completely forget. That's just the way it is. Uh, so what you can do is set up like email reminders where it kind of sends them, you know, reminders that, hey, we have this meeting, we have this meeting. So that's kind of the only way I can think of. But yeah, that's the calendar feature. It's a good step in the right direction. I like the uh, system that I was adding new features, but beware, depends on when you watch this video, there might be some glitches or just, yeah, some things that are like missing features, for example. Uh, but yeah, that's the short, ver short version. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Obviously, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.